Welcome everybody, wonderful good afternoon, it's Tuesday, episode 59 of SF Live. My name is Kai Hoffman, I'm the CEO of the Sort of Financial Group. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. A little different time than normal, because uh, our guest today, Chairman and CEO of Alexco Resource Corp, Clint Nelman, he is in New Zealand right now, it's 9 o'clock in the morning over there. It's a bit unusual, so uh, we'll be switching over to Clint in just one minute here. Uh, let us get uh, the main part, our homework out of the way, or housekeeping out of the way. Uh, please use hashtag AskAXU for your questions, that's the company's ticker on the US. US Exchange and here in Canada and to make sure to get your questions in the next 15-20 minutes while we're chatting to Clint and we'll get to your questions at the end of our session here. Again, I'm on with Clint Nelman. He's the chairman and CEO of Alexco. We briefly talked about the COVID situation in New Zealand. We're going to skip that part now. We're going to jump ahead. Uh, Clint is trying to get to Canada, um, <laughs> but he's, we're still dealing with a two-week quarantine. And uh, you were just giving us an update on how, how Alexco has been dealing with COVID in the last few months, but also how it has impacted the ramp up to production and also the permitting situation. So I apologize for that again. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, guys. As, as I was mentioning, um, you know, things have slowed down slight, slight obviously, uh, during this COVID period, but we have had a constant presence. We are moving ahead. Uh, we have been moving ahead with the uh, surface capital projects. Um, we haven't been doing anything underground in this period. Um, you know, we've had 30 or 40 people um, employed uh, during uh, this period, and um, uh, not all of those people are on site, obviously. Um, and for the senior people that we uh, that we do have employed that are not on site are working from home. So it's worked out reasonably, reasonably well. Um, and, uh, you know, we've taken all of the proper and appropriate uh, uh, measures to to ensure that, uh, you know, that the company and the communities um, are are safe. Okay, fantastic. Has that caused any hiccups in terms of like ordering long lead term items or uh, mm -hmm. working on the underground development or anything in that regard? It, you know, it's kind of interesting. Um, you know, some of our mill components are actually coming out of China and they have shipped without uh, pretty much on schedule. We had an underground equipment fleet, uh, which we picked up, was sitting on a, was sitting on a dock in Thailand. Um, and it shipped during this period also. So uh, we have not seen any major delays in our supply lines at this point. Doesn't mean to say it couldn't happen, but at this point, we're, we're feeling pretty comfortable actually. Okay, so first poor Q4 2020, we're still on track for that? We are, and uh, so um, you know, with the with the award of the of the water license now, and then just uh, today, of course, we announced the uh, closing of this financing. Then we have all the pieces in place now to move this district to production. You know, the runway is relatively short, um, and uh, yeah, we will be producing concentrate in the fourth quarter of 2020. Fantastic. Water permit. That was the main issue that's been holding you back for two and a half years. Um, let, let's just exactly. stick on that. Like, well, why did it take so long? It was just bureaucracy or uh, you got to go jump through the hoops and do check all the boxes until you get there or anything we don't yeah, know about? Was, you know, this was an amended and renewed water license. I mean, our, our original water license um, expires um, in, it will expired and it, expi it expires this year, be replaced by this new one, obviously. Um, and uh, so we, we we not only had the renewal of the existing water license, but we also had to amend it to ensure that we had the proper authorizations to mine and process material from the Birmingham deposit, this new Birmingham deposit that uh, that we have. So that that um, you know certainly played into uh, some of the delays, the additional work that had to be done there. And don't forget that this is a two stage process. That there's an there's an environmental assessment portion to the process, and then there's a water licensing or authorization, um, you know, part of the process. And it is certainly the the water licensing part of the process was the was the slower part, um, you know, in most part, you know, due to a combination of additional pressure on the water board with a number of companies in the Yukon looking for licenses and authorizations. And, and you know, to be frank, um, the, the, you know, the, the, the water licensing process needs to be more efficient than it currently is. And the government, no. to be fair, the government is, recognizes this and is working to, you know, try and try and fix some of these issues. Fantastic, because I'm sure there's quite a few companies behind you that are going through or soon going through similar processes, so they'll exactly. benefit from it. So. Exactly. 
No, yeah. fantastic. Um, as part of the water <laughs> license, when you put out the press release, um, you also mentioned that uh, you amended the terms with uh, wheat and precious metals on the silver stream. Uh, I think that's going to be hugely impactful moving forward. So we should spend a minute on that as well. Um, what does it do to you guys? And like, why did you amend it? And yeah. what, what are the effects of it? Yeah, I, yeah I'm glad you, you sort of raised the point here. I mean, th this is it's a this is a material change as far as we are concerned. I mean, we're we're a relatively small player, um, and uh, you know we have an arrangement with wheat and precious metals whereby we stream 25% of our silver, uh, pay, you know, payable silver to uh, wheat and precious metals, and they pay us, um, you know, for that silver based originally on a grade and price curve. So with this change in the um, uh, in the um, in the in that formula and with this new agreement, um, the amount that Silver Wheaton will pay for their silver as we deliver it will increase, you know, about 70 percent in the first couple of years of the project, and a substantial amount in the longer term. So if you try to reduce that to um, you know, to real numbers in say seventeen, eighteen dollars silver market, we'll be producing, you know, four million ounces nominally, four million ounces of silver per year. So twenty five percent, that's a million ounces um, that stream to silver wheat. Under the original structure, um, in a seventeen or eighteen dollars silver market, um, they would have been paying us uh, less than seven dollars for that silver, six fifty seven dollars. Under this new arrangement, it's about twelve bucks. Wow. So I mean, there's a five million, there's a five dollar difference per ounce there, um, and uh, you know it, it's extremely important to us because in the first couple of years of the ramp up of this project, we are doing a lot of underground development work. So if we try to de-risk, if we look at the risks in this project, de-risking the first eighteen months was critical for us. Um, and this and and, uh, and to be fair, Wheat and Precious Metals, the team there stepped right up to the plate and didn't hesitate to uh, to to recognize uh, what we're trying to do and to help us out from this perspective. You know, on the flip side, in terms of the oil and sustaining costs, um, you know, the, the 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 imputed contribution to cost, you know, goes down from about 250 an ounce to, you know, maybe a buck 80, buck 90. So it's it's a significant change for sure. Fantastic. And you only had to give up 2 million share warrants at $3.50, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. And yeah, I mean, the, the, the uh, uh, you know, we certainly acknowledge, um, you know, the help that uh, that we're getting from wheat and precious metals here. Fantastic. What does that do to the IRR now? It's like, and uh, that's another thing, like you're building your mine off of a PFS. So we'll, we'll touch on that in a second. But what does that do to the overall economics? What's the payback now that you've amended it? Oh, it's uh, boy! I just uh, it was originally the IR originally was you know way north of sixty seventy percent. So and of course some of the capital has sunk now. So we'll redo those numbers. I think a better way of looking at it is is from an NSR perspective. If you try to you know try to look at the you know what the NSR was with the, under the original agreement, you know we were carrying thirteen, fourteen, fifteen percent. You know NSR. That number now longer term. You know, is less than ten percent in the first couple of years. It's around seven percent. So, Fantastic. I mean, that's a you know, that's a more meaningful way of looking at it from 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 our perspective. Fantastic. And uh, coming back to my original point, is like uh, you're building the mine off of PFS. Is there anything that needs improvement or that you're going to be working on to get it to a higher confidence level? Uh, are you going to be putting out a feasibility study or anything later on? Is that intention? Um, well, we. You know, we I mean, that, that you know that's a good point. Uh, but I, I would also you know make the point that in certain in certain areas of our, you know mine plan, specifically the the Birmingham deposit, which is so high grade, um, you know we have drilled that deposit underground. The first couple of years of production have been drilled at you know between five and ten meter centers. So we have we have carried a lot of the work um, that we have done in preparation for this production at a feasibility or greater level, um, but you know we 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 produced a pre-feasibility uh, report. So I am very confident that um, you know the work that we have done is going to be is is sufficient to have high confidence in the. Uh, in the uh, in in the you know in the in the in the ultimate productivity and production you know from from the various mines. 
Okay, fantastic. Let, let, let's take a look forward. And uh, your production profile significantly drops off in year eight. And uh, so far, you haven't done a lot of exploration in 2020. So what's the plan of sort of backfilling that? <clears throat> Yeah, so, I mean, exploration, you know, the, the, the geologists have really carried this, you know, company on their backs here for the last four or five years. And, uh, you know, we've put a lot of ounces on the books, um, you know, 74 million ounces now in the indicated category in this district. And only, you know, 30 million of those are in this existing mine plan. One of the discoveries that we've made that's particularly important is this Birmingham deposit. It currently has in all categories you know, about 40 million ounces of silver. There is a, that, that deposit though, has geological and structural characteristics of something that might be much larger. And to that extent, we have drilled underneath that deposit, you know, 150 meters, 200 meters underneath that deposit and have intersected fairly significant intervals of high grade silver material. So, you know, my, what we talk about and what, and what I talk to our technical people about is that if in this district there's another one of these 80, 100 million ounce, you know, silver deposits, high grade silver deposits, I'd rather know about that now than later. The caveat there is that it would not change any of the existing mine plan. The shallow high grade material that we have right now that's slated to be mined would never be preempted by deeper high grade material in my view. However, it would maybe change the overall strategic view and pace at which you develop the develop the district to 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 take into account the capacity, you know, that that's available uh, in the district. So exploration is where it's at. Um, you know, we have very good indications of uh, you know, expansion of these high grade deposits, especially at Birmingham. Um, and we have other discoveries on the books. So yes, we have to continue doing exploration. We're putting ounces on the books, you know, inception to date for about 50 cents an ounce. Um, so it's pretty hard to, uh, you know, to, to beat that in, in, today's, uh, in today's environment. Yeah, the 50 cents an ounce is not a bad number. That's not a bad number at all. Um, just a curious question, like what's the production capacity and what's the capacity of the mill? <clears throat> The design capacity of the mill is 400 tons per day, um, and uh, so you know, in the it w we'll be um, initiating um, you know or uh, feed to that mill um, in the third quarter, in the fourth quarter. This at the average throughput, I think, from the very first day in, in 2020, um, in the third quarter, is going to be about 140, 150 tons per day on average through the rest of the the year. Um, and then it wraps up relatively quickly towards 400 tons okay. per day. That's we tough. have operated that mill in excess of 400 tons per day. Um, and uh, with the feed that we'll have for CNC from, you know, three mines here um, in the first uh, six months or six or eight months, um, we're going to have plenty of feed for that mill. Um, and uh, we feel pretty comfortable that we'll operate at design capacity. That being said, um, that uh, as, as time goes along, and we get into year two and year three, we certainly have more oil available than we can push through that mill at 400 tons a day. So we're looking for, um, you know, some expansion of the capacity in that mill to about 550 tons a day, year three yeah. onwards. Do you have to amend your water permit? <laughs> yeah, um, yep. with, uh, that's why it's out there in year three. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, fantastic. Um, I remember back in July, I, I was on site last July, early July, I think it was. And uh, you, you mentioned back in the day, you wouldn't touch the declines until you had your water permit. Um, but we had the discussion yeah. like um, that you're already fairly far ahead in your development process going towards production. When, when did you open that? It's like, what, what was the the idea there? Like, in, in, like no, sorry, uh, let me qu qu phrase that differently. Like, what stage are you at in terms of uh, construction right now? <laughs> Well, I mean, there's, there's two aspects of it. There's the surface, you know, capital construction projects, which are pretty straightforward. Infrastructure, water treatment plants, you know, roads, mill, um, you know, upgrade modifications, refurbishment and whatnot. Underground, um, in each of the, we, we have driven 
um, about you know half of the underground uh, uh, you know work that has that needs to get done to put these deposits at Birmingham and Flame of Moth in production. Um, you know, half of that work was done previously before you were on site. Um, and uh, so each of those deposits is on average about 300 meters away from, you know, the initial production levels at, at, at this at this point. Um, so, the, you know, the, the, the actual ramp up plan here is to go back to Belkino, which was a mine that we were worked in uh, in the 2010, 2013, 2014 period. There's a fair amount of ore that's available in that mine that can be relatively easily extracted and delivered to the mill quickly. Um, and that'll be the initial part of the plan here while we're developing uh, Flame and Moth and then Birmingham. Flame and Moth will come online um, later in the fourth quarter um, and Birmingham will be online in the first quarter of 2021. Okay, fantastic. Um, let's talk about the financing real quick. You set out to raise twenty. You raised. Uh, you closed at thirty. Um, I'm really curious. Like, where's the interest coming from? Like, uh, did, what do you see in the markets right now? Like, or where did you did you get a lot of phone calls or uh, your bankers? Yeah. So the we we had a it had a very favorable response to the to the financing. Um, most of it is institutional money. There's. Um, a little bit of retail, not a lot. Um, I don't see a lot of hedge funds in, in there. Um, and so there's no question that uh, Wheat and Precious Metals, by stepping up and leading that financing, um, you know, had a beneficial effect and, uh, and, and a lot of people uh, followed it along. That being said, uh, larger, um, uh, you know, shareholders all stepped up um, in, uh, you know, on a pro rata basis um, and um, or an approximate pro rata basis and, uh, um, and and contributed. So, yes, we we initially uh, were, were uh, thinking that 20 million dollars was plenty to, um, you know, to 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 move through this uh, ramp up and early production period. Um, that that very quickly escalated um, to 30 and beyond, and so uh, and we were pretty happy with the with the outcome, for yeah, sure. No, no, fantastic. So I was curious, always curious to see where the money is coming from and flowing in from. So um, that, that's always important for us because we try to get a sense of the market, right? Um, yeah, I mean, just... there's a lot of a lot of, a lot of money is. I mean, there's significant material. Um, you know, uh, investment coming from Europe, for sure, especially in the silver business. Oh, fantastic. Um, just quickly going back to the water permit, I forgot to ask you before, like um, in the press release that you're almost through the process, like renewed water license process now nearly complete. What does that exactly mean? Uh, it means that the water license has been issued in draft. It's, in, it's, it's issued that way for editorial and grammatical um, you know, review by 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 the stakeholders, by the interveners, um, and then following that process, which is already closed, the uh, the water board will clean up the license, make sure there's no mistakes in it, and then issue it in its final form. So that'll that'll happen uh, this this month. It's an important process. You don't want mistakes in those authorizations because that requires you know you to go back and amend amend the license to change any of the of the you know numerous metrics that are in those licenses that uh, have to be complied with fantastic i got an esg question for you as well um you're chairman and ceo of alexco and uh you're one of the few that's left out there that's chairman and ceo you, you're not in production yet so i don't see a big issue with it but i'm sure glass lewis and iss will come calling uh once you're in production or producing company what, what's your plan there yeah, well, clearly, I mean, it's a it, it, it's a it's a very valid point, and I, quite frankly, I'm 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 very sensitive to it. Um, we we in terms of the governance, um, you know, we have a lead director, um, which is required in in this type of a circumstance, um, and uh, and at some point, the company needs to address the issue for sure. Um, and uh, you know, that being said. Um, you know, there has been some, you know, sort of interruption. The, the, the company has gone through a period here of getting a lot of stuff done. I mean, in 2020, we monetized our investment in the environmental business. We sold our environmental business. We tried to backstop in case the COVID uh, 
uh, at the initial COVID scares, and it became really critical that we wanted to make sure that we could continue with our, our work in, in Canada, in, in the Yukon. Um, and then with this, now with this financing and working forward to the ultimate production decision, there's a lot of stuff that had to get done here and decisions that had to be made along a fairly linear mop path. And I think the board felt that it was best to sort of not change the, the structure while we're going through that process. Now we're through it though. I think it's a very valid question and one certainly that uh, that I'm sure that, that myself and the board will be addressing. Fantastic. Um, let, let's um, uh, Alex go up first. Like, what, what, what's happening in the next three, six months in terms of news flow and catalysts? Obviously, going to production, that's one thing. But uh, is there anything else we can expect from the company? Do you have any drill holes in the lab or anything um, to guide us yeah. there? Yeah, so we'll be starting our expiration. Um, you know, it was delayed for obvious reasons here. So it's, it's, it's mobilizing at the present time. Um, so it's going to you know, be drilling these deeper holes at Birmingham. Certainly, if we have success there, it's going to generate a lot of interest because, I mean, strategically, it can change the entire, you know, forward outlook on the on, on the project. Um, so there's that work going on. There's the, you know, the mill commissioning, of course, and the first production, that type of, uh, you know, that those type of um, events that will be uh, that will be happening. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we, we haven't settled on an off taker yet. Um, so we've, we've got numerous off takers that are that have contacted us looking for our product. We have a very high grade, unique product um, to sell into the market. Um, and uh, so, uh, you know, that that process is uh, needs to be completed. So, I mean, there's still there are still you know, hurdles uh, in, in front here, or at least uh, benchmarks that we need to, to we need to reach. And, uh, um, you know, we're, we're systematically, you know, moving forward and moving past them. And we'll keep everybody, you know, completely informed as we as we as we go down this go down this path. It's for us. I mean, to be fair, it's all about execution. I mean, the, you know, that it, it as I tell our people, you know, we've worked for two and a half years. We worked hard for two and a half years just to get to the hard work part. And the hard work part is now. <laughs> so, like, it's all about execution. Exactly. Perfect. Clint, thank you so much for coming on. It was a pleasure talking to you today. Uh, thanks for making the time. Uh, really appreciate it. everybody else. Thank you so much for watching. It's really appreciated. Make sure to follow us on YouTube, on Twitter. Make sure you turn on the alert buttons as well. That way you get notified when we go live with another interview. And to follow us also on Instagram and Spotify. Tomorrow we'll be hosting SF Online, our first ever virtual online conference. Uh, make sure to sign up at soarfinancial.com events. We have a great lineup of eight companies, two great keynote speakers, Marcus Pusla and Joe Mazumdar. Uh, yeah, starting at 6 a.m. PST. So follow us for that as well and uh, everybody else. Clint, thank you so much, and uh, we'll talk again very soon. Thank you.